Uh, but Skip, let me start with you. Should yeah. someone be fired? I wouldn't fire him yet, but I don't think he's going to last that much longer. But he, you, you do have to give this man one break and only one small break. His team looked like a top 10 team for much of that game. Yeah. They're up 38 to 10, and the starting quarterback goes down and out of the game. And you have to throw a true freshman into the fire who goes, what, three for 17 the rest of the way. Does Kevin Sumlin deserve a large share of the blame? You better believe he does. But he has eight of the next nine games at home. I don't think I've ever seen a stretch of schedule yeah, like that. Yeah. Eight of nine at home. Yeah, the Arkansas is a neutral well, site. I'm sorry, that's you know what? That's you're right. I mean, they're that's, not leaving the state of Texas. They're not leading the state of Texas. So look, here's my bottom line on Kevin, and I've said this from the start. Johnny Manziel made him, yeah. put him on the map. I hate to say it, but it's just the God's truth. First year out, they go 11-2 and two with Johnny Manziel winning the Heisman in that stadium and all of its, its new wings. It's the, the house, house that Johnny, Johnny built. Yeah. It was. You're right. And the next year, they go 9-4, and four, and it was still pretty sensational, won their bowl game. And then 8-5, and 8-5, and 8-5 and five, eight and five with losing conference records. And, and I think he is what he is. I think he's, begin, he's getting exposed as he wasn't that guy to start with, yet they gave him a new deal. They gave him a big extension. And I didn't like the regent, what's his name, Tony Busby. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't like that because you just, I, I know your emotions run amok, but mm -hmm. it's the classic don't hit sin moment sure. because you do have recruiting hanging in the balance here. And your program's still going in a pretty good direction. You did bring him in for this year. You got to give him this year to see what he can do. I, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if they started winning games, but they're going to have a hard time without the the quarterback yeah I'm, I'm losing Nick Starkle that's unfortunate he yeah. played really hard and he played really he well he you did. know for for the line share of that football game I, I think that there are three main reasons why no coach in college football take Kevin Sumlin out of this for just a second no coach in college football should ever lose his job in season save for a couple of things one gross mi misconduct mm -hmm. or inappropriate conduct or a mm -hmm. toxic environment for the players and I mean toxic and there are three reasons, right? So the three reasons are, one, this is amateurism, and these people bang the table for amateurisms. And if you don't want to pay these players, then allow them to play for the coach that they chose to play for, okay? So if you're going to let them play out the season, these kids were not drafted. They are not contractors. Mm -hmm. They are not making money off of this endeavor. They chose to come play for Kevin Sumlin, not for the Aggie ring or for Kyle Field or – they chose to play for Kevin Sumlin. Let them at least finish this season out trying to play for the coach that they committed to. And I think firing a coach in the mid middle of the season creates a huge leadership vacuum, and you don't know where kids are going to go. Remember, these are 18 to 22-year-olds now. You might lose some. You might lose some yep. in school. They could become ineligible, or even worse yet, they could flunk out of school completely. So there are a plethora of reasons why you don't fire a coach in the middle of the season for – for, for any reason outside of those that I mentioned earlier, inappropriate contact or a, a toxic environment. And then for Tony Busby, I don't want to get too personal on Tony Busby, so I'm not. But I was mad at Tony Busby. And you know why? Because this guy has the audacity to say what he said, representing a region of the country that is embroiled in the greatest flood disaster in our nation's history. And he thinks that a college football team is important enough to spend $10 million mm. to change a coach. That's all I got to say. And by the way, he's a Houston resident. I don't think they should fire him immediately, but I don't see how he makes it out of the season because of the expectations and his false expectations, Skip. Because they think because they play in the SEC, mm -hmm. they should win national championships. Let's be real. You can really only name a handful of players that's ever gone to Texas A&M. And most of them, with the exception of John David Crow, mm -hmm. came out in the last decade. That's not Alabama. Mm. When you think of Texas A&M, you're not thinking Ohio State. You're not thinking Michigan, USC, Alabama. Mm. It's a false expectation. Now, I get it. It was, I mean, 34 points. I mean, Atlanta Falcons like, whoo, they took us off the hook with that one. <laughs> it's like, hey, they lost a 25-point lead, Skip. It takes them for eight. Hold this beer right quick. I'm going <laughs> to top this one right quick because I'm going to go in there and lose 34. Mm -hmm. Skip, Texas A&M, when, when, when teams come out, 
They're never ranked in the top five. You're not thinking about Texas A&M as no... They think because they play... See, the misconception is they are a Power 5 conference, but they're not a Power 5 school. Mm -hmm. How many schools are you going to go to before you finally say, okay, Texas A&M have a chance to win the national championship? A bunch. Okay, so you're saying they can't do a whole lot better than Kevin Sumlin? No! No! Okay. That... They got lucky. I mean, look, Johnny Manziel had one of those magical runs, Skip. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, you'll get one of and, those guys. By the way, just for the record, Johnny was ignored by the University of Texas right. and by A&M for a long time because he finally committed to Chip Kelly at Oregon. And at the last second, A&M said, well, we'll, 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 we'll take, take you. you. Yeah. Oh. And really? he didn't necessarily want to go compete no. directly with Mariota. Remember, oh. they were the same class. They right. were? Yeah. So, okay. and, but Skip, and the thing, like you said, He's playing a true freshman. Now, if the guys, if the, the, the starter doesn't get hurt, who knows? The game's probably 56. It could be. But you take skip, skip, they couldn't run, they couldn't, they couldn't throw the ball. Couldn't do anything. And now the guy that all they know you're gonna run, mm -hmm. you gotta give them credit, Skip, because they made this comeback and didn't get a turnover. So think about how think about it now, because you know what turned the Atlanta game. Yep. It was the strip side. Yep, yep. This UCLA did not force a turnover and came back and won a game from 34 down mm -hmm. with two minutes, uh, two minutes and 45 seconds left in the third. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it was it was systematic. Yes, and 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 you're right. That's the shocking part. Sitting in the booth is that you're expecting like a pick six or a, a returned Scoop kick. Score. Yeah, it, it, there wasn't no, they, any. They, of that. they had it was their very... chances at interception. Well, A&M yeah, did, and they had I'm their saying. chances to end the game. Yeah. But I will say this: when you're the head coach, you're responsible for your coordinator's decisions. And, and I felt like A&M made yes. an unwarranted adjustment on offense. They did. And no adjustment on defense. Right. They went away from the run game, I in agree. particular, the two-back set on hard the offensive to, side. Hard to fathom. And then, yep. and then John Chavis, the defensive coordinator, who, by the way, is the highest-paid uh, yep. assistant coach in America, right. he didn't adjust to the tight end. Caleb Wilson was a monster yep. in that yep. game, and he kept putting him in man coverage with he a did. safety 12, 15 yards off him. And, Shannon, you know at that point – I can give them a little outside move, and I got the entire middle of the field to work with. And, Skip, they came with a bomb blitz on one. And the, mm -hmm. in the bomb blitz situation where you bring in everybody, the end has to peel. If That's that right. back player... He didn't peel. He didn't... And, but you know one thing, Skip? They're going to keep going for them fourth down. You know as an offensive player, I got four downs to try to get a first down. Yeah. Because I can't punt the ball because I'm... What have, what have I got to lose? So, this was, this was all-time bad.